welcome to this lecture. We had discussed about the DFT model, the symbols that are used, how to draw the different levels of the DFT diagram and uh, we had also looked at some very simple problems. In the last lecture towards the end we are trying to develop the DFT model for the tic tac toe problem. The tic tac toe is a simple computer game and here there is a 3 by 3 square where the computer and the human player they take turns to mark one square and whoever gets 3 consecutive marks on either a diagonal, a row or a column wins the game and if all the squares get filled up without anybody getting 3 consecutive symbols then the game is considered drawn. Now, we want to develop a software for this and we want to develop the structured analysis document or the DFD model for this. The first thing to do is the context diagram and the context diagram is extremely simple where we draw one circle, write the name of the software there and then identify who are the users. There is only one user and that is the player the player enters move and receives the response. So, that is the context diagram very simple here that write the name of the software tic tac toe software number is 0, the external entity is human player enters moves and receives the display. Now, how do we develop the level 1 diagram? In the level 1 diagram, we identify the high level functionalities and represent them as bubbles, typically between 3 to 5 bubbles in the level 1 diagram. If we look at the problem description, one is about reading the move and validating that, the other is about playing the computer move. The computer move need to see the board position and then need to identify what the would be the move for the computer and then display those. So, we can model that is validate move once the move comes validate move and then the move is marked on the board display board and then the computer needs to play move and check winner. So, once the human player makes the move, the move is validated that is updated on the board and then the check winner, winner must be there just to check whether after the human player has played a move, if he, the player has won, if won then the result is displayed otherwise the computer makes the move again the winner is checked and the display board is made. But uh, just uh, remember that this is a data flow model and therefore, we do not represent control aspects like which bubble will operate after which one those are not really important to our uh, design uh, that which one will execute after which one. 
we are just identifying what are the sub functions of the play move and sorry the handle move a move is made by the human player what are the sub functions of the handle move and uh, then we just represent them here. Now, we develop the data dictionary right uh, the display is game plus result because that will result in the balancing of the diagram. Uh, in the level 0 diagram the context diagram if you look at then display is the data that is produced by the system whereas, in the level 1 diagram there are two data that are produced game plus result. Therefore, to balance must write display is game plus result move is an integer the board is uh, 9 integers and the game is also 9 integers and the result is a string. Even the tic tac toe problem was a very simple problem. Now, let us do a slightly more sophisticated problem which is the trading house automata automation system. In this there is a trading house which wants us to develop a software to automate its book bookkeeping activities. The trading house has many regular customers who place orders of various kind of commodities with it. Now, the trading house has a set of registered customers call them as regular customers and each customer has a identification number. And uh, when one of the registered customers places order, then the account department checks the credit worthiness of the customer. The credit worthiness is checked by finding out the payment history of the bills sent in the past. If the account department says that the customer is not credit worthy, then the bills are his orders are not processed further and a rejection message is issued that uh, sorry you will not be able to handle your request. But if the account department says that the customer is credit worthy, then the orders are checked against uh, the list of items that the trading house deals with. For those uh, items which the trading house does not deal with it just uh, does not process them further and just sends a message saying that it does not deal with those items. And for those items that the trading house deals with it checks its inventory if the items are available in the desired quantity then a bill is printed and sent to the customer and also a material issue slip is printed. The customer can present the material issue slip and take possession of the items and once the items are been bill has been raised for a certain item then the inventory data is automatically adjusted. And if some item is not available in the inventory, then there is a pending order file for that item is created and the number of uh, items the quantity that is required is uh, stored there along with the customer identification number who has raised that request. The purchase department periodically issues commands to generate the index. And here for those uh, items which are out of stock, the number items, number of items that are already demanded by the customer for that item is uh, taken into account and 
the required quantity for each item is placed against the vendors who supply those items. The vendor details are maintained in a file, their contact address, the items they supply and so on and uh, for a specific item the indents are raised against the specific vendor who supplies that item. Other than handling requests from the customer, it also answers managerial queries like what is the statistics, sales statistics, what is the volume of items sold, what is the price realized and so on. So, if we want to do a structured analysis of this, we need to first do the context diagram and context diagram uh, consists of uh, drawing one circle with the name of the software in that and identifying the context in which uh, the system exists that is the u different users who would use this software, what data they would input and what data they would receive. And here if we read the problem, we will find that uh, for this system the name of the software is trading house software, just write that here trading house software. And then we identify that uh, there is the customer is one of the user and uh, the manager is another user we have the account department as an user and we have the purchase department who raise indents they are also another user the customer places orders and receives the material issue slip. The account department checks the credit worthiness, looks at the order and checks the credit worthiness. The purchase department looks at the pending orders and issues the indents. The manager request for statistics, statistics request and gets the statistics response, statistics request and gets the statistics response. So, drawing the level 1 diagram is rather straightforward. So, we had drawn the level 1 diagram here, the customer, the manager okay, not shown the account department here, but the account department also ok. So, sorry the account department is uh, software that is uh, inside it, the accounts department role is done by the software. So, we not shown the account department as a different entity here. Automatically that is done here by looking at the credit worthiness here and therefore, no specific extra input required by the account department. It is done within the software, the credit worthiness of the customers is checked. So, the customer places orders. and receives response which is the material issue slip and also item not dealt with by the trading house uh, system etcetera those messages. The manager can raise statistical queries and get statistics. The indents are placed on the vendors 
and the purchase department places generate indent. Now, the level 1 DFD if we read through the problem description and identify the functional requirements, we will see that the major functional requirements are the high level functions there are accept order. So, the order is placed by the customer and then it checks whether it is a valid customer by checking at the customer file and also checks the customer's payment history automatically decides whether the customer is credit worthy and then checks the item file if the item is actually dealt with by the trading house. It also checks the inventory file and the accepted order is uh, given to the process order. The process order looks at the inventory if they are available then it would issue a material issue slip bill and it would update the sales statistics and also update the inventory. But if the item is not available then it will record that in the pending order file. The inventory does not have enough item it will update the pending order file and sometime the handle indent request will be uh, operated by the purchase department they will give indent request and then against the vendor list and the pending order the indent will get generated. The managerial queries concern only the sales statistic and uh, that is uh, once the query comes the appropriate statistics are obtained from here and displayed. So, that is about the level 1 DFT. We then need to do the data dictionary every data item that is appearing either in the level 0 level 1 we just write the data item and for the primitive items we just directly write what purpose they are used and for composite items we write the component items. So, this again is the data dictionary which is becoming quite long. So, based on the problems that we have so far modeled using the DFT we see that uh, DFT is a very simple model and uh, we it helps us to achieve decomposition. We perform a detailed function model using DFT and at the same time a detailed data model is also built the DFDs help us to achieve uh, functional decomposition and at the same time decomposition of data takes place. Now, let us see some of the mistakes to avoid while constructing a DFT. The context diagram contains only one bubble that is the simplest representation. If we draw more than one bubble in the context diagram that is not correct. The external entities appear only in the context diagram and in level 1, level 2 etcetera context the external entity should not appear. In any DFD level only 3 to 7 bubbles per diagram should be allowed. Here 
here only the data flow is represented we should not represent things like which one which function operates before which other function etcetera we just represent here each function what data it uh, needs and what data it produces. This is one of the very common problem they represent the control arrows here that is which one operates after which one and so on and that is not correct. Just to give an example let us say we have a developer who has drawn this diagram that uh, check number and for check number uh, if the number is valid that is between minus 1000 and plus 1000 then the number is searched here. So, search is another function the num number is passed on to the search uh, which generates one of these messages found not found. Whereas, if it is not a valid number it generates an error message and that is the function to generate the error message produces the message. But then we have drawn an arrow here, but generate error does not need any message any data and that is the reason why we are not able to write any data here. then it is actually representing control information because it does not represent data it just represents that generate error will work after check mem number is completed and that is something wrong. So, this arrow should not be there it represents only control information no data flow is indicated by this arrow and that is a mistake. Now, let us say this is the diagram developed by uh, somebody. Now, please find errors here. There are four errors here. Please observe the diagram. The first error that you can find here is that uh, a data store can be updated or read by a process. So, it cannot directly come into a data store. The second error, so this is the first error here second error here is that uh, data cannot flow from one store to another automatically there has to be a process through which it flows. So, this is also a mistake second mistake the first mistake is need a process to update the data store data cannot flow from one store to another store automatically without a process. Now, are there any further errors? There are many other errors. For example, the process error enters the statistics, but then statistics is not really required by handle indent request. So, this is the extra data that is not needed there and uh, similarly handle query should produce the statistics not consume the statistics. So, the direction of this arrow is wrong. So, this is the three this four fourth mistake. Okay. So, let us proceed further.
the common mistakes more mistakes are const, uh, committed by beginners. For example, if conditionally something is done then represent a uh, arrow there and uh, that is uh, not really required because we should represent only data flow. Just to give an example, let us say this is the get book name process it reads the book name and if the name is proper it passes the book name to the search book which produces book details. But if the book name is not proper it should print a error message. So, this arrow is incorrect because print error message produces some standard error message it does not need any input input data and therefore, this is a control arrow and uh, this is not really required. Now, let us uh, proceed further. We should not miss any functions in the SRS document. If there are some functionalities that are mentioned in the SRS document, they must have been represented on the DFT. And it should also not represent extra functionality, which is not required in the SRS document. So, listed the commonly made errors here, unbalanced DFDs, uh, forgetting to write the name of the data on a data flow, functions that should be there based on the SRS document are not present or data that are should be produced or consumed are not there omitted that is a error external entities appearing at higher level DFTs representing control aspects, context diagram having more than one bubble, bubble decomposed into too many bubbles at the next level, terminating the decomposition too early or too late, using nouns to name the bubbles etcetera these are some of the common errors. Now, we will conclude the DFT model in the next lecture, we just have only few items left on the DFT model and then we will look at how to convert the outcome of the structured analysis that is the DFTs into the structured design, which will give us the high level design and which can be coded easily that we will discuss in the next lecture, uh, we will stop now. Thank you.